just sound a little just a little bit sound just a little bit toward uh toward uh uh rock that way. Put it on the wall already. Put it over that way, put it over this way, just put it over this way. Come up a little bit, push it that way. Come up. I can see it better. Push. You want to catch it? Right, right then put it over towards you a little bit. It can't well yeah it can. Okay. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Pull it that way? Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Moving from that end to the other. There you go, there you go. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's perfect, that's perfect. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let looks good, that looks real good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good evening, everyone, and uh, both to Intellectual Radio. Um, glad to be here. This is Mark on the Mark. Um, we've been gone for a minute, but I, uh, I, I'm really glad that uh, I've had time to uh, uh, really comb Chicago a little bit and look into what's going on in the sports world and then just look at what's going on in people's lives. And uh, I want to touch on uh, a few things uh, uh, during this show, and uh, I hope you like them. And then let me let me say by the way that I've been really monitoring uh, all my fans that uh, come see me on uh, Facebook Live, and uh, um, I really really appreciate you because we've been getting you know back and forth in some uh, real touchy subjects, uh, not just uh, sports subjects, uh, true life subjects. I got a few friends uh, who uh, have um, different um, struggles with. Uh, uh, their family and life things and uh, I just want to let you know I've been communicating back with you and I'm with you uh, And I'm not a personality that doesn't um, You know say hello back to you. So I'm here and uh, We're gonna have a great time today and now oh, I got a, a new sponsor here. Um, here he is <laughs> It's total life changes. It's actually, uh, it's a great company. Um, it's probably one of the few things that I've taken that works uh, I think um maybe about six months ago uh, I was like 80 pounds heavier. Yeah, he lying. Yeah, I was a big boy. Well, I and saw him all the light. <laughs> yeah, big boy, huh? I said, damn, <laughs> man. Hey, dude, you remember when I saw you come out the crib? Too big, huh? Cause yeah, you was big. I lost weight. Yeah, I was like, yeah, gee, you lost weight, man. Yeah, yeah. Cause I'm you was coming it. to the game, you a big boy. Yeah, okay. That's you were laboring. Okay, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. Man, and, you uh, look great, man. You look like you was back to your plan style. It's um, you know, I have to. Give it, I'm be 100, which is totally cost of the tea. Total life changes. The tea is great. Uh, they got a supplement, the uh, yellow supplement that'll be great. But we'll get it to you. You'll be able to get me and inbox me. But um, what, what's the website, Mark? They uh, got a website? I'll get them. You know, you guys inbox me or you know, come inbox in, you, you know where to do, and I'll send all the information to you, and we'll get it done that way. Uh, but uh, I looked at all the messages that I got this week, and I really. Think that I want to kind of answer and dig into some of the. I mean, the questions I got is I want to dig into some of them, and some of them are just keep coming back and forth. And one of the big ones I want to start off with is that people uh, are wondering why Mike Jersey isn't retired in uh, Dallas. In Dallas, man. In Dallas, and uh, yeah, it's and only one person got better numbers. And he was there twenty years. It yeah. took him twenty years to get better numbers. Wow. Well, you know, but he can go. Yeah, but it took him 20 years. Give you 20 years, he couldn't have coached. Yeah, uh, well, What's his name? Say his name. Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki. Like Dirk, he the only one got better numbers than Mark Mark Wyatt Dallas. He's a good guy. And, and you I know, like he's him. a Hall of Fame. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. Mark is going to be a Hall of Famer soon. And, but we just want his name, right? Montreal Jersey Race to the Rock. Right. Yeah, and uh, Mike uh, Kelly. Mike your man, Kelly. the oh, spearhead, man. Where you at, man? Mike Let's Kelly, go. we got to give you some love, hey, man. Hey, and I got the uh, information on your little one today, man. He has a, a kid, man, that um, has a few uh, um, um, uh, health issues. And I got your video, man, and it touched my heart. And, uh, you know, like I say, I was in the hospital for a long time, and I touched my heart, and I want prayers and everyone to really surround you, man, because you, 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 you've you been there, and you're a good guy. But, uh, you know, uh, I look at that Jersey thing, you know, I kind of look at it sometimes with being not upset, but sometimes almost being embarrassed. Like, you know, how the hell? It's, you know, because when people ask me that, you know, and they, uh, they ask me that, they say it. They almost assume 
That is, yeah. That it's there already, yeah. you know, and that's the funny part about it is that, you know, when they said, okay, you know, and then the thing goes out, I look at the uh, faith, I look at uh, all the messages, they say, uh, everybody said are it, Are you Mom? kidding? Your, your jersey is not retired. And I'm like, Who up there right now? Um, they have uh, D -Harp, Derek D -Harp. Harper, Brad Davis, Brad Davis. Rolando Blackman, uh -huh. I think it is. Yeah, those are the guys that they mm. have up there. And Rolando so, Blackie, man. Right, but it's a... Uh, I it, like Rolando, though. He hit yeah, the first free throw to an All-Star game, man, with listen, Magic that year. Listen, I can't. I'm not going to take anything from you. You know how I am. But he couldn't get out with you, though, big yeah, fella. But, I'm sorry. But I'm just saying. I know, that, man. I know you shoot shot. You know, not the fact. I'm, I, I understand. I, I totally it. understand uh, why, uh, you know, that would be axed. I don't know why, why it's do you think, not man? there. I don't know why it's not there, but the thing is, is that, I mean, it's almost embarrassing, man. You know. Well, imagine like, how they feel, though. I don't know. Because somebody uh, asking them every time, like, "Why my jersey up there?" It's almost embarrassing, dude. You know they asking them people. And Mark know. Cuban, man, I know you know, man, dude. It's, come on, Mark. You know, um, come on, man. You a great owner, dude. This man right here put up numbers over there. It's almost embarrassing, you know, because when I look at Dallas, um, you know, and I, I don't think of. Uh, you know, my name going down in Dallas. I think about the best small forwards in the league. I don't think of myself as in, you ain't in the world. Limit about. Yeah, with that I one don't. Team. I, you know, I, 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 my conversation is that uh, how did you compare with uh, Bird? That was the conversations that most people come. How did you compare with Bird? That's nasty, compare, man. How did you? I'm, that's what they talk about. They I mean, compare they, you against Larry Legend. Yeah, you know, they want to know how I. Because imagine you, know, you to play with McHale now. Look, let me tell you, Larry Legend. All you know, you can do what you want to do. Larry Legend is cold. You know, <laughs> hey, you know I'm 100, I'm 100, I'm 100, I'm 100, I'm 100. I'm 100. Larry Legend is cold. Ain't no way for us about it. And you got, you know what? One thing I love about you, man, you respect those guys, man. You're not no hater. But then I'm like, going to tell you, you the real, Mike, though. Mike is crazy, but what? I'm going to tell you the real, though. You know, you got some guys that, you know, they say there's all of this and all of that, and they're not. They're not. You know, they're right. not. They're okay. Right. You know, we had a conversation today, you know, um, and we'll go back to the, um, the the Jersey thing. But I had a conversation with her today, and we talked about um, uh, Kevin Durant and LeBron James. And I was telling him that as of this day to day, when I look at a player, I would have to give the best player in the NBA to a LeBron James. You better give it to Mr. Versatility, I would, I would, man. I have to give it to him. But what I'm saying is is that on top of that deal, when you look at a straight killer, Kevin Durant's a straight killer. He was shooting that ball listen, from half court. Listen, when it came down to it, and I really respect what Curry and did, they said, listen, the game of three in Cleveland. He was in the cigar bar. He was in Cleveland, him. and you see the offense went to okay. You the yeah. carrier. I'm coming to you. So uh, he's a killer, you know. And, and 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 when we talk about that, I don't put everybody in that category. I you can't know, put but everybody Mark, in that category. You know, we we both can agree to disagree. Yeah, KD is a killer, but there's an asterisk by that to some degree because he did leave OKC after he got his ass whooped by them. Yeah, that's true. So you would have never did that. That, 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 that. Would you have went to the Bulls after they swept y'all? No way. <laughs> that's all no I want to know. No, would you have went to play no, with Pippen Mike now? I can't do that. All right, I then, my All right, right then. So let's not get too but what excited I'm saying, about what I'm KD. Is that I think things are a little deeper than uh, actual basketball with that. Okay. So I think things okay. are a little deeper. So yeah, it was business. Yeah, I, it was business, but then I think it was a. Uh, I think there was a little uh, tough. Relationship thing going on with he and uh, Westbrook. And Westbrook and him yes. would have had the relationship you and Isaiah would have had. Yeah, they yeah. ran the table. No, we ran the table. Hey, they listen, were. listen. I, I really appreciate you guys. Here we are, intellectualradio.com. Uh, this is my home. This is where we're coming out of. I really wish you guys were going to call in. It's 708 223 8953. Call in right now. Call in at 9 30, though. Because um, I want to talk to Mark a little longer. He want, see, he want to call I want Mark to myself, time, man. man. Just, Even though he called me all the time, I'll be like, like but hey, look, I've been sleeping in every day. Mark, like, man, you ain't woke yet. Cause I've been up at four thirty. I've been sleeping in. My wife and Essence spent. I'm like, oh man, I got the king size to myself. You gotta get up though, man. Yeah, I know. You got, you gotta get up. I you know, but I go to bed at two thirty and wake up at eight. 
That's six hours. See, well, whatever you're trying to do, man, but you gotta get up. <laughs> Well, hey, um, another thing I want to touch on is uh, that ahead, people have been hitting about is the Paul University. I can't escape it. I really can't escape it. Yeah, man, it. that I elephant mean, in the room with you with the jersey and the Raptors at Dallas and that DePaul. But see, that's another thing I can't escape. Um, I think um, uh, uh, just what happened to DePaul. And then I really want to go back and that I had a great week where I actually was in a meeting with all of the top coaches in Chicagoland area, and when I say all of them, I do mean all of them. And so, you know, I wanted to sit down and pick their brain, and then, you know, I really wanted to uh, actually schedule them to be on the show. Mm -hmm. So we can actually, you know, get, get, it in, out get in deep about But they need to be a frat. But what I'm telling you about them, though, is that, you know, from the underlying number is that what had happened in the past, they ain't feeling the ball. I mean, they ain't, I mean, I'm not going to say who and what coaches, man. They just not feeling it, Paul, and that, and that shocked me, man. You know what I'm saying? Is that I don't know well, what you happened. Really, you know what? You shouldn't be really shocked because there's nobody over there identifiable that's in the streets of Chicago. Like, if you're from Chicago, you need to have a resident within you that, that's moving around out here. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody knows who the coach, like, you might know the coach's name. Right. But, like, that's only because you're old school and you've been around that. But, like, I wouldn't know him if I seen him. Right. Well, like, you know, I know the Nick Urban's of the world and all them boys in the streets. I know all them dudes. The man you right. call, I know all of them. And it's a change of the God, Ma. Well, I can they understand. They need to be able to reach these young boys, I man. I can understand you, God. But, look, what I'm saying is that, me personally, I know uh, Dave Leo. I know him. And uh, I know him as being a fair, uh, good man. That's what I know This him. is I second stint, though. But I haven't, I haven't jumped into him about... His coaching style or anything. I'm not putting that What in coaching style? But what gets me is that uh, uh, when you talk about recruiting, is that there's a, a there's something, some gloves, some smoke screen, some something is why the relationship with Chicago and DePaul. It sucks. It's severed. It's totally severed, dude. I it's think you and uh, I think your generation, when you played for uh, uh, Ray Meyer, and when Quentin them played for Trey Deal, because that was Trey Deal team. No matter who was the coach, Trey Deal was the assistant coach there. He the one that yeah, got Bobby was, them there. He was the assistant coach. He was the one that got Bobby and Paul and all. But them just them. take that in it. Just that, take, but that was the last generation just of take real that, people. Just take that in a nutshell. That they're saying that every time that they were able to recruit successfully in out Chicago. Of Chicago they Final were, four. They were successful. Yep. So, so now. So all, DePaul, y'all are not doing what y'all supposed to do. You can't recreate it now. I mean, I mean, you can't, you can, I mean, you don't have to recreate it. So when I look at it, what was the issue? You know, what's the issue why kids can't come to DePaul University? Can I add to that, Big Mom? Well, I want to know why. I'm going to tell I'm, you I'm, why, man. And I'm going to tell you why. Are you sure you know why? I know why. Everybody because, guess and tell because, me why it is. You I, I the magic you. man with the answers. Give me why. He is the magic man with the answers. Hey, hey, hey. Here he is, magic man with the well, answers. Most okay. of, they didn't keep you on board. They didn't give you a job in there. They didn't give Terry Cummins a job in there. They didn't keep Ted, Teddy Grubbs and Skip Dillon all of those guys. That's history, man. George Mikan. Wasn't he there at the yeah, ball? You know, I mean, they didn't take care of those, take care of y'all. Like, not you don't need nobody to take care of you. But keep y'all around the program. You know, like the Dukies in North Carolina, all those players still yeah, be having jobs yeah, around there. True. Mike ain't left North Carolina yet. Yeah. His black ass still there. <laughs> Blackie's still there. And Mike hey, comes look, back, too. And hey, Mike, hey, Mike at the football game giving away stuff. Yeah, Talking Mike about the roof back. at the ceiling. Drunk but, ass you know, Mike. You know, I, I can't say that you're wrong in that. I'm right, Mark. Mark, and if I you were still there, dude. Well, 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 let me tell you, well, well, let me tell you what it does, though. You know, and, and, and this is for everybody looking at, look at you know, listen to the show. And this is kind of simple to look at is that if you have a relationship with, um, say, uh, uh, any type of business and you continue to give them business, they rely on you regardless of what and they're loyal to you. And I think the loyalty for Chicago uh, just Go ahead, ended. Mark. Read that. Well, somebody else just asked that question. I could not believe. Okay, I'm still on DePaul, but we're going to get to this. Uh, Adrian Dantley get a ring after they traded him from, from, from Detroit. 
Who is this? Kwame? Mo, what, are you keeping up with basketball? <laughs> Kwame. Kwame, come on, man. <laughs> Go to Google and get that. <laughs> did, did, did AD, AD didn't get yeah. away once they got him up out of there. Bob. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I go ahead, Bob. Me, but, um, <laughs> so all I'm saying is, is that, you know, you were successful in doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're successful in doing something, why change it? You know, and, and, and that was your core bread and butter to be able to say, I can always have a great program with my relationship with Chicago. I mean, with, with, the, with, with the schools and with the people in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So now, um, you talk about uh, uh, anybody, uh, Quentin, you talk about... Uh, Quentin Rich. Quentin Rich, you talk about, uh, name me another one. Yeah, Bobby Bobby Simmons. Bobby Simmons. So, uh, to have, Lance, but to have Paul. those guys... Around extend your, your relationship with the Chicagoland area. Y'all would have had like Jabari. Imagine if yeah, they kept up. Y'all would have had Jabari, Jalil. You would have had the E-Rolls. Because all of them came after the but fact. But what I'm saying is that they're all friends. Yeah. Their moms are friends. Well, come on, man. Chicago, man. So, you know, if there was anything that I would say is that, you know, and, and, and I've been up to DePaul. And uh, matter of fact, I went and uh, went back to DePaul and got my degree just so if uh, you wouldn't be able to say that. No, I mean if that job uh, was uh, at a position where I could get it, I would coach there. I would actually. You love deserve that there. job, but man. I, I can't say that. You know, it's it's. You yeah, it's not for you to say I'm a fan. Let okay. me say it. Okay, but all I'm saying is that <laughs> all I'm saying is that I bleed Chicago. I think I, I think everybody know now because I've been to every gym you can name in Chicago, and I travel back and forth, you know, uh, to be here and uh, do the things that I do. But um, uh, in answering the questions about that, and you guys ask questions about that, um, uh, that's the problem. You know, I even heard at one time. Do, and, so you agree with me? I, that they're so, not keeping y'all in. You, Paul. I think you, they, I think that keeping y'all a part of the program, man, that, in the gym with the boys, man. That connects you. That I agree, but that connects you to Chicago. That's what I'm saying. So you agree yeah. with me then? Yeah, that connects you with Chicago. So I that's what I'm that. saying, yeah. man. Most of those programs in the South. Well, I ain't gonna say most of, them, but the Dukies and the North Carolina program. But put it, but put it like this. Put it like this. Put it like this. Is that let's say like we were talking a second ago? Say they do. Bobby saying, hey, let me do this. Intellectsradio.com because I'm going on. Call in, man. Call 708. 728-223-8953. What time we got? We got 930 call in because I'm still talking tomorrow. Okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so all I'm saying is is that if Bobby's a guy that was successful from here, every coach respect that. He played for you. Get the job. Well, I mean, I'm not talking about the job, man. I'm just talking about what it brings and the fact that Every mom, little kid that's growing up has seen Bobby play. Now, all of a sudden, that's Bobby Simmons. I know him. I'm going. And now he's at DePaul University. You have a, a really good chance of directing of getting that kid. So when I look at now, when I look at the staff now, there's, there's some, I can't say they're not good people, they're not good players, but there's not a connection to the of streets that, of that level. To the streets. It was to the streets, street, but, but no, not to the streets. Because they got a guy in there from Chicago. I think he. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. No, no, it's, no, it's no. But but anyway, they were part of Chicago, but they weren't Bobby Simmons, somebody who was so on the floor. Oh, Bobby Simmons somebody who was on the floor. Let me finish. Somebody who was on the floor for you, giving blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, so. Um, I just think that in terms, because I'm just, you know, trying to get to the nitty gritty of that's some of your crushes. Okay, I mean that's the way I see it. I, I'm 100. Could you imagine I'm they caught you, I'm Bobby Simmons, Quinn Richardson, Paul McPherson? Well, you get it. Lance. You get everybody. I mean, from 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 the DePaul era. You get everybody to be a part of the organization. No, put them on you, payroll. No, well, they got. I mean, see, stop going there. But you don't there. want the money. But stop put them on the payroll there. if stop you don't work. Going there. I'm right. just saying. Okay, I won't say. Just that. stop going there. All I'm, I'm saying. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they paying the mother ones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, we know if they are, they got to pay. Them. But imagine but, if them young boys coming in and playing against y'all. But what I'm saying is that. But the thing is that they're going to have a grip on Chicago because all the coaches, they want him in their gym. They want them to come to their thing. The moms that have seen them, 
you know, saying, I used to watch him play. What did a little kid gonna say? You know, what did that kid gonna say? So, you know. I wanna go one step further. Go ahead, baby. No, you know, go, go ahead. What you say? Everybody come to our AAU open, or when it's a live period, Every all the coaches come here to get our kids. They come and get them, too. So, if everybody comes to Chicago to get our kids to hoop, why not stay at home? Let me let me drop one thing, and I can't um, I can't verify this, and I've heard it a hundred times and a thousand times, and I can't verify anything at all. I was told that doing Joey Myers' uh, tender as head coach, he had an issue with uh, some of the coaches here, or some riff with thing uh, i don't know I don't, yeah but some of that stuff got to be buried big dog you know it's it's been I, I i know what you're saying too because the the knock on chicago is man the coaches are crooked and they might be on the line and all this stuff oh stop that you know but no i'm telling you, you got, I'm gonna you, answer you, you, circuit, crook, so. you got crooked across the country across the country so don't be just pulling so out chicago if we that, had man, jabari we got Jalil okafor you know, we got uh, Livingston, uh, the kid. Well, oh, like you know, kids, yeah. you just had Kendrick Nunn, yeah. the from Simeon. Yeah. I mean, you just had the young boy that was in the final four for Loyola. Yeah. Left. Can we stay at home? Well, you know what I'm saying is that we you say can we stay at home, but there has to be preparation set before they get to be a senior. You know what I'm saying? And right. before they get to be a senior, they know – the DePaul players. I mean, I don't know how many DePaul players they know now, you know, but... Uh, it's got it. You know, I, you know, know. I talk, You know, I haven't talked to Marcus Liberty in a while, but we used to talk often about that. Right. And him being there to go over to uh, Illinois, and him and Kenny Battle, and uh, Irvin Small, and all of them, be the recruiters for Illinois. They were the fly on the nine nine. Why not be able to, for them to recruit kids? They right. refuse, Illinois refused to keep our players involved in the program. And right. that's why we struggle. We have one national champion in the history of Illinois, and that's Loyola. In 60, what, three? Wow, that's crazy. All this time, since 63, I hope, I hope every administrator that's in charge of recruiting and that's in charge of basketball in Chicago see this. Hey, intellectualradio.com, here we are. Y'all got to get more them in all, man. Y'all got to get more. 8 Corey McGetty, man, all these boys from here. Well, Went you know, to the league oh, good. Well, I wanted to touch on that, you know, because I'm trying to really use this time I'm getting wisely. Salty. Okay, I'll I see you get a little salty. Yeah, because I don't like that, man. I really want I would to much rather you come to my son game recruiting him. I'm <laughs> like, if, if, if I'm going watching you, hey, boy, you got game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a little Lenny Pushin watching you. I'm just kidding. You know, well, uh, man, good stuff, uh, man. Yeah, I, you know, these are just things. I mean, you guys are uh, actually uh, fueling my. My, my, my conversations with you and I really love the way you chime in and I read everything. He knows I read everything. He he finds me up at you know, yeah. three in the morning. We we can both, both stuff. my light told us two or three o'clock. Three, say, oh, I saw you all read the post <laughs> late last night. So uh Mark's sick with it right now. Uh, no, man. I'm saying is that I know listen, I ain't in it one hundred and I know that uh and forgive me, you guys look at me, you know, and thank you for it. This you know pro athlete and uh, world champion and I I am I am that but the other side of me is that uh, I set a goal to achieve something and I I really want to achieve cleaning anything up that I can clean up for you that you don't know about so when I read a lot of things at night it it, it ignites me saying, "Wow, I can't believe that you know they, they, they you know that that they don't understand it and that's not clear." And that makes me engage, and I thank you for engaging me like that, and I love doing it. Uh, so and to yeah. add to that, big fella, the only NBA player online right now, communicating with people real time. Well, big fella, the only he the only one you can find that that two time world champ did this thing, and, and you can reach out to him. No, yeah, rest yeah. of y'all dudes. Well, you can get to me. You can get, you can get you to know, Mark, man. And the other thing I want to do is I want to uh, talk about the NCAA here for a minute, okay? And basically about the way they set rules. You know, and let's just go there. So let's talk about the on-court rules. We got an on-court rule. They they initiate this thing. Is everybody went to an AAU game, and then after the game, you see all the kids get in line and they shake hands, and that's supposed to be sportsmanship, right? I don't like that. Well, hold on, let me let me finish. Let me okay, finish. Let me finish. But. 
in the AAU games, they allow the, you know, the going up and making a basket and doing a... Right. And a they allow you to make a basket. If a kid's laying on the ground, they walk over them. And when they do all of these things, man, these things start confrontation. Yeah. Okay. It's so, heckling. Uh, it, whatever it is, it's con you know they allow them to do it and start confrontation. You know, and and my issue is is that um, if you're gonna try to make this that type of game a sportsmanship game like that, then even the uh, the sportsmanship that happens after the game, you're gonna have to enforce things are that happening. In during the game. the game. During the game. Well, first of all, you know, man, the, uh, uh, just to add to that, you got uh, rental refs. You got the, the worst referee in, in the state in the world right now. They need to send these refs back to school and get some license to understand how to referee games. Because, man, dudes is missing stuff. I'll be there. you be there, too. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. The referees NCAA, is horrible, NCAA is where these kids are going. AAU is the place that they're, you know, uh, uh, get their, you know, craft together, if you want to say, but now, if you want that better product to come to the NCAA, you should, you know, NCAA and uh, AAU, just from a standpoint of coming together and being able to start some type of committee, some type of, you know, uh, thing that betters both of them, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, the conduct on the floor, you well, know, and they call well. us, the bad, okay, they call us the bad boys. And we were the guys that were fighting and all that kind of thing, right? Y'all wasn't fighting. Okay, was but just bullies. No, no, but what I'm saying is that um, it's great, great that they could tell that, you know, because nobody want to be hurt. But it was done by the league over the entire span, everybody. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So now as AAU, I went to a game and I saw a brawl. I saw families coming out of the stands. You did, Mom? Oh, my goodness. It was embarrassing. I saw... You know, things that are embarrassing to basketball and things that are being said across the court, you know, but either it's you have someone there, you set rules on them, or some people can't hold games. You know, I mean, some people cannot hold games if they can't control uh, things that are going on. You, I mean, you just can't have it. I mean, it, it's a bad look. I want to add to that, Big Mom. You know, growing up, hooping in the streets, and you hooped in are the you streets. Are you online? I'm watching your comments. I'm, I'm just following your comments. Okay. So I'm live watching you. So yeah, I'm good, following good. your live stream. That's good. But, like, when we was growing up, there was nobody out there in, in the streets to break the fight up. So people knew how to harness their behavior. Like Pretty your mom and them one there. No, you, know, you like, got into so it. You got it, was it. Going all the way. it was going all the way. It was so going you, all the way. So you knew how to harness that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, everybody want to be tough because they got auntie and all them in the stands. <laughs> so, Mark, I think uh, the problem starts with bas the, the problem with basketball right now is there's not a genuine love for it with these young boys because they, they can pay to play. I suppose when we grew up, you had to play to pay, play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, yeah. And you made it to the league. I understand that. I totally understand you, that. You been the, I've been in games. Okay. I had to, look, I'm in Michigan with my son Kobe playing. And it's this shorty. He don't like my son Kobe so much. Can Kobe talk trash? He's like his daddy. I mean, what the hell? He going to talk trash. But you, just because Kobe giving you that work, you're not going to put your hand on him. Right. So he fouled Kobe two times hard. And I say, all right, now, nah, all right, that's enough, ref, man. You got to call that. He... Damn that leg Kobe out. I'm in Michigan. I don't care who in the building. I stand up in front of the whole crowd. Hey, man, y'all better get control of this up See, in now here. now you the problem. You know what I'm saying? Now you the problem. I'm the problem because if you hurt my kid, I got to pay that ass doctor bill. <laughs> now you the problem. <laughs> the ref looked at me like, you're right. I know I'm right. Because y'all scared of the Michigan people. You need to be scared of me. See, you the problem. So we got to get you out the gym. You got to go. We gotta get you out. Yeah, okay. man. I had to stand up and voice my opinion. Intellectualradio.com, the number is 708 223 8953. And uh, I really like, again, uh, uh, thank my sponsor, TLC Total Life Changes. Um, this is a product that, you know, like I say, it works for me. And uh, you really should check it out. Like I say, you inbox me or whatever you need to do to get in touch with me, and I'll put you in touch with this problem, now, with this product. Now, the second thing, the other thing I wanna talk about is that I uh, got a lot of things back from uh, people who are uh, 
looking at the NBA, they're looking at the NBA, and they're looking at it in terms of saying that um, the super teams, okay, the super teams, and uh, why do guys, you, you touched on a little bit about what Durant did, and you're talking about why do guys go from, you know, here to there, super teams, and, and things like that. Um, you know, I, I look at it like this, is that um, if you were, um, I don't know, if you was a, um, if you wrote code uh, for a company, okay, and you were excelling at your your craft, but this is a small company, all right, uh -huh. and then all of a sudden you get the Facebook <laughs> we'll to come, come out uh, to come to <laughs> say, look, we're hollering at you, but we are ready to big boys. You might as well come to big boys, okay? From a a smart Business, business decision. I mean, from a business decision, you know, I'm playing with the winners, the big boys, and I'm going to win, and it's going to increase my, you know, overall, overall business profile. It's going to increase everything, you right. know. So, uh, I don't fault him for that. But when you take the scenario, like we discussed, Durant, he was already. Give me another. Uh, who, who's a competitor to or competitor or doing the same business at Facebook? Well, not quite, but uh, um, you talking about that that uh, I mean, got a big social media platform. Oh, a big social media or a big. Well, you had Steve Jobs. Okay, so we're talking about uh, any, uh, any any technology company. Let's put it right. like a technology company. Uh, Silicon Valley. So if and I'm second to them, and I'm Durant, and I had Golden State down three one, was it three one? Yeah, but uh, Westbrook judged. Well, hold on, well, hold on, hold on. He had him down three one, and then lost to him, but then went to Golden State. So I think there's something else involved in that. But that would be a hard decision to go from number two to number one, and I just lost the number one. You know, but the other way, I don't think it's a. I don't. I don't think it's a, a bad. It's not thing. that bad of an idea. I don't think it's a bad thing because if the opportunity, it was kind of like you know, in the beginning for me, I was like, damn, he did that. But they, they made it where it was possible for him to make the same money. You know well, what I'm saying? Okay, well, I'm going to look, I'm gonna look at the money side. I, I, well, I'm always looking look at the at money side, side of it because I'm not like Paul George. He didn't leave OKC okay, because he didn't want to leave $40 million on the table. Not Dude, George. you don't leave $40 million on the table. Come on, play. he wasn't going to do that. Why would you leave $40 million on the play table yeah, for a championship? I wouldn't give a damn boy. I never won a championship. I'm not leaving $40 million on the table, Mark Dwyer. And I made you to death, man. I understand. I wouldn't have played the... I, hey, look. I if I was playing for uh, Sacramento Kings and you was in the league, and you say, man, you my boy, come on over here. We're going to win the championship with the Pistons. And I, and I, but ain't nobody going to do that. I'm not leaving. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a different story. Ain't nobody going to do that. You know, but this is a different story. Kevin Durant was in Some a different. Some people do it, though. Kevin was in a different situation like that. He was in a different situation. Yeah, because they could pay him the same thing as his team was paying him, right? Yeah, that's a different so story. So it was like, it was a win-win. And KD, if I would have left, I would have did the same damn thing. Because Westbrook, man, I love you, man, but he a... Oh, I ain't going there. I ain't going there. I'm not going there. I'm not you going love there. Westbrook, though. Hey, intellectual, That's your way, intellectual, man. Intellectual radio. Mark love Westbrook, 708 <laughs> And uh, I just, you know, I'm really trying to touch on these and get to them before, you know, our hour is up. You know, uh, uh oh, what you got? Right Somebody there? asked me, Donnell Brown say, uh, they need you, Big Mark, to coach a low post game to them cats in the NBA. Too many threes now. Nah. What do you say to that? Uh, Darnell, is it? Uh, Darnell Brown. Hey, Darnell. Uh, how you doing, man? Uh, well, really what I want to say is that, um, you know, when you look at the game in the NBA and you look at the playoffs now, let's talk about looking at the playoffs now, the pick and roll in the post game does the same thing. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is create a double team so that you start that chain reaction of swing, swing the ball for all you uh, listeners and viewers that understand uh, what I'm saying. If you have a dominant low post player, you have to double team them. And it causes the swing, swing. That means you come, somebody doubles, you swing it, you swing it, you swing it, and you get a shot it's on, the other side, open on the other side. So you are absolutely correct. And you see during the playoffs, what happens is 
is they create a mismatch, and you noticed in um, the Cleveland series, they tried to get LeBron switched off uh, to Curry, and LeBron's not going to beat Curry off the dribble, but he would kind of take him to the mid post, somebody would double, or he could go to the basket. So uh, when you look at straight post-up guys, um, you don't see too many that straight post up guy, but I do think at one point that value is going to show itself again to have a post up guy, but uh, it's, it, it, it achieves the same goal. You know, in, in the playoffs, you see more post ups than you do in the regular season. So I hope that, that answers your question. You know, um, the, the high spin and roll, the game is so fast right now, and we know, I mean, I know you know from experience, the game is evolution now. It goes back, yeah. It, it, it goes always back. goes back. Because you remember small Pick and roll been in the game since... For, since Moby since, Dick was so a legend. Uh, it, it, it's been, it's, you know, and they're going to go back to pose. They're going to go back to pin downs. They, as a matter of fact, now they do uh, pick and roll pin downs. And oh. when I say pin downs for you guys that uh, don't understand, that's after the pick and roll, the guy that pick and rolls or the weak side guy, when that guy helps, he pins down on the first guy down. So if you're helping the roller... That guy becomes open. Ah, so, uh, that's free game, man. I know a little bit about it. Ah, I know a little bit about it. Hey, boy, uh, that's free right there, Mark. You got to yeah. make them pay for that one, big dog. Hey, okay, you um, got another question. What, Mark, what? Question, Mark. Unfortunately, our guy Tracy did. He was let go of his Chicago State back in March. I heard that you would consider taking that that head coaching job. Is that accurate at all? That's from wow. uh, Joe Smith. Hey, Joe. Um, okay, you know, I, I pride, pride myself on this show and keeping it 100, so I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Is that, um, first of all, I think all you guys that have been with me since I started this, I don't think there's a question of you understand my love and dedication towards Chicago. And um, I went and got my degree and make sure I went back to school to get my degree because, you know, it's something to do. I, it's not something I needed to, you know. But that was to actually coach college basketball. And I have been fortunate enough to be offered from quite a few places, and I appreciate what they've done. You can't say their name? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm <laughs> not going to do, do, do that. I know you said it to me off the uh, record. I can uh, Yeah, I have told you, yeah. but I'm not going to do that. But I want to coach here. And you should. I, coach I did uh, uh, put my name in a hat after I talked to the uh, new AD uh, for the Chicago State coach. But uh, I Zurich? Did, yeah, Zurich. But they haven't chosen one yet. Though, no, they haven't you know. picked anybody yet. No, so you might still get that gig. Well, you know what? Uh, I know that's a tough one. But you, know, you can turn it around, one. though, Mark, because all it is is yeah. habit. Well, and we become creatures of habit. But I just love coaching. Yeah. You know, yeah but I, see, I, but because you're a pro and you compete at a high level, you can show these guys habits, man, because winning is a habit. Winning is a habit. But you know what it is, though, man? When you look at basketball um, you have to look at it kind of beyond basketball I look at it in the terms of saying that I want you to have a total college experience meaning this is that I want you to come to school understand what basketball is and then understand where your future is so far as the vastness of our world. Yeah. Just, yeah, I mean, like. I told uh, my sons that the other yeah. night. I said, dude, basketball is such a small fragment. Of yeah, but I want to know how to monitor it and how to nurture it and how to measure it and. Uh, Be more. Yeah, I want to. I want to. And then now you have a total uh, 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 athlete. Person. Business. Student, in it. Yeah. Athlete, student experience. Yeah. You have, you have the whole thing. And that's. What's beautiful about it when you say, I went to the school, you know, I enjoyed my time being college. there, I learned a lot, I did a lot of other stuff, but my experience was great, you know, and that's going to, ch- that's going to, that's going to involve, that's uh, going to shape you, man. Well, is it, I mean, because when you're recruiting, you know, you recruit a guy that's, you want the talent, but you want to recruit an individual that um, is uh, committed to being, you know, Everything, you know. When I look at the 
I think one is, uh, I can just say, well, he's was everything. And look at uh, Okafor. Okafor was an excellent student, you know. And you got some kids that are in the public school system that are not incredible athletes, but they're good athletes, and they're good enough to play, And but they're good kids all around, you know. Right. So um, I want them to have a I good college experience. I love Okafor. I want them to have a good college experience. That's you know, my I name, want the star. Man. I want to start, but to start, you're going to have to stand, understand how to have a good college experience, too. First of all, but, man, a star ain't nothing but a role play on the next level. Absolutely. How many kids you seen be the shit in high school, get to college, be like, wah, 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 Intellectualradio.com. <laughs> <laughs> Put that tombstone by seven, me, seven, done. <laughs> I got another question for you, big dog. Okay. Somebody asked you, Tony Dismute. He said, Mark, where can I send a copy of my book, Game 7? I would love for you to have it. Where can he send a copy of his I book, I think Game if 7? you're doing that, you can reach me, and I will find Email? No, he, all you have to do is... Uh, he can he email it to you? You can inbox him, yeah. Oh, you can inbox him on Facebook? Can he? Can you inbox, can you, uh, inbox well, see, him, Tony? Yeah, I think he can do that. I think he's, he's, I think he's a friend of one of those. Okay. If not, tell him he's on yours, right? So he no, can, he's on yours. I'm on your live stream, big dog. Oh, so he can inbox me, right? Yeah. Okay, so, hey, we'll find out. Uh, game seven, hey, it better be good. Because if not, when I come back next week, I'm going to let you know. Yeah, and you know what, man, Mark sometimes, he's a nice real. guy, but you, if your I'm offense ain't good. moving the ball, he gonna light it up. He gonna light his fireworks with it. It, it, it better be for real. <laughs> it, it be for real. <laughs> hey, we moving in on it. Like I say, intellectualradio.com, and uh, I want to introduce you to my sponsor again, TLC Total Life Changes. And uh, please, uh, you're gonna you can inbox me on that also if you want to really try, you know, uh, this product. Uh, let me know. You can get to me, y'all. You guys know I answer everything, you know. But let's talk about this this new thing you're doing with the cigar box, big dog. Oh, cigar box, big dog. Okay. What you finna do? You you finna be the Anthony Bourdain of the cigar box? No, really. What I want to do is, I you know, I want to, you know, I'm a fan of you know great cigars, you know, and um, <laughs> he ain't uh, say good cigar. Well, you know, great and, uh, cigar. what I want to do is basically. Um, you know, with Intellectual Radio being a part of uh, all my shows, I want to kind of take it on the road. I want to take it out there so uh, I can get out into different uh, places in the city. And since I love cigars, I'm going to go places in the cities where uh, I'm going to tell you where I'm at during that week. Uh, my sponsor uh, who will be sponsoring it will be TLC. They'll sponsor it. And I can get out and create this show inside the cigar bar and let you guys ask me questions, you know, because um, I get so many questions that I want to answer, you know, and I answer some and some I can't get to. I try to stay up and do them all, but man, I can't, you know. But I'm going to allow uh, uh, people that attend the cigar bar to be able to uh, sit in the audience and ask questions, and uh, I think by that time I'll have uh, my... Um, it's called Be Live. We've been working on it here. Well, I'll have my uh, guest also, wherever he is, over the country, uh, on the screen, and you can also ask us both questions. So uh, look for that. I hope they announce that. All you guys that are my friends, and uh, you'll know that I'll be taking Intellectual Radio and uh, Mark on the Mark, uh, along with TLC, out in the... Uh, cigar bars throughout the Chicago land area. I'm looking so, forward to that too. Yeah, I know. Because I know since I'm with Mark, I get to smoke good cigars. <laughs> <Let's> go, <let's laughs> I won't be smoking those stale ones. Get out of here. Get out of here. stale as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, My man um, Mark. Uh, you know, I, I just want to, I mean, we're, we're rolling in on it about five or six minutes. Uh, I got another question for you, though. Okay. You got a chance to answer go this ahead, one, big dog? Go real quick. Okay. Who, Andre, who is it? Andre Ali, was the small forward position in the NBA 80s the best position uh, from uh, Sweet Georgia Browns with your jersey on? I'm Afro. I'm Afro from Sweet Georgia Browns with your jersey on. You got my jersey on? 
His, his name is Afro. Oh, you gotta be cold to wear twenty four, baby. Ah, you and Reggie Tears? No, no, no. He Reggie Tears wore twenty four too. That, no, he don't get to the cold. <laughs> he was nice. <laughs> you gotta be cold to wear twenty four. Are you kidding me? Oh, me? Oh, 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 oh. Malone. Moses Malone. Kobe right? Bryant. Kobe two four. Hold it. Ah, yeah. You gotta be cold to wear twenty four. Twenty four with that number two. Oh, hey, twenty four. What was that number? 24. That was heavy, man. You put it on, you got to put it, get it carried on your shoulder. But he said, uh, what about the, uh, the best two positions during the 80s? Well, he said, um, he said, was the small forward position in the 80s the best position? The small forward and the two guard were the carry position. If you didn't have them, you didn't win no titles. Right. You know, because okay. if you look at them uh, over the period of time, uh, all the the teams that got two that won the whole damn thing in the championship they had put it this way they had a not necessarily two a, a guard and a three right they can score that yeah and then but if you had a four two that took you over the hump okay you know because okay. if you look at the lakers you had magic you had kareem but then you had worthy and you had cool yeah but what i'm saying is that magic Kareem worthy yeah that was you the know big three okay if you look at uh the sixers at that time you had doc Modi, and then you had uh, 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 Mo Cheeks. Mo Cheeks. Mo uh, AD. Uh, and Andrew Tony. Tony. If you look at the uh, Boston Celtics, you had. They were loaded. La 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 Larry. <laughs> 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 you had Larry Legend. I got a picture with you, God Larry. You look I like love, a little boy, I man. I love God Larry. Man, it was six. I, Larry Ma, six nine. I saw. I got a picture with you Don't guys. Me was little boy, man. I was straight gangster. My mom and about? you was a little boy. Now yeah, I know yeah, you was little boy. He was listen. like looking over you like man for the scope. I had to guard him, but did you see him? He go? couldn't guard did you, you, though. Did you see him guard me? No, no I didn't no, even right. play deep. Did, did you see him guard me? So now. No, I, yeah. I know you was a better, uh, no, better no, offensive no. player. Than but um, most. you look at all of the teams during that era. Those were two positions you had to win at. And if you didn't have a cold small forward, if you look, Dominique was in the. Deep in the playoffs, Larry was deep in the playoffs. New York was in the deep playoffs with Bernard King. King. Y'all was the uh, best folk ever yeah. in the eighties. Uh, yeah, well, we were you, cool that. but do you have a Bird. small goal? Even AD, I give him credit. I'm not telling you what he did. He was the there. Uh, you find another. Uh, team Kyle Malone was he later on with y'all? No, he was with the Utah Jazz, but he was but a power forward. But he still was that forward. Right, he was that. You had to have one. So right. if that um, answers your question, then uh, I, you know. I mean, you talking about you, Bernard King, Larry Bird. Man, I don't even want it. You know, what now, I got to do, take it out and give it hey, to you hey, all the hey, damn hey, time? Hey, no, well, you know, you have to do your job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you man, know, mom. I want to touch on one thing. Mom, and I, I hope I can, um, I hope you can understand this, is that um, a lot of times people talk about, you know, the superstar, superstars, and then they talk about guys who trash talk. What is this? Somebody got another one. That's Mike, Mike Kelly. Kelly. He says, Mark, okay, my glasses messed up. What is it? He said, uh, Mark, is it true you introduced Mark Cuban to Don Carter? And if so, if so, introduce him to me and all your all your jerseys will be raised. Start the uh, movement, radio, social media. and Mike, Mike is trying to get Mark. Jersey retired. Mike, Mike Kelly! Mike Kelly. Appreciate Good stuff, you, boy. Um, well, yeah, I was a, a part of the uh, uh, the front office team when um, they sold a co the, the uh, team to, um, oh, jeez. See. Uh, to Don, uh, Mark, Mark no, Cuban. It wasn't, no, it wasn't Mark Cuban. Before that, it was uh, uh, Perot. Oh, they sold, they sold to uh, his son, his son. Perot. And I was on that group. And I knew we had a conversation, and, you know, he was okay with it, but he was actually willing to uh, sell off parts of it to the team. And I knew Mark. So, and Mark has said this publicly. I kind of brokered the relationship with uh, uh, Ross Perot Jr. to Mark Cuban to buy the uh, – Mavericks. So, oh. so Mark, I, I started that chain uh, for Mark oh. uh, to buy the Mavericks. The look, look, let me tell. Hold up. Let me drop it to you like this. You know, I understand Cuban's the owner, but let me tell you, 
just from me to you. If, if, if Cuban was a jerk, I would tell you. Cuban's a cool guy, man. I don't know if they go to committee to do that. I don't know what it is. And Mark's not a guy who says, uh, I'm king and I'll just say what I want. He, he's not going to do he's that. A, he's an owner, owner, player, coach. Yeah, but he's a guy. cool he loves guy. His guy. Man. He's a cool guy. And I know that he wouldn't be the one that would be negative about no not after our relationship no. it wouldn't be like that so i don't know if it was something with the old regime that says this year. don't retire his jersey i don't know what 2019 this year yeah, big well wild. you know whatever happened happened but i want to get back to this thing we, we got a couple minutes left, left. uh intellectualradio.com uh 708-223-8935 or let me get a couple questions alex for english you. kiki van kiki van uh, and kelly chapuka what about that? They, they just named them, like, small four. But who, 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 what, what they want to be? They were saying, uh, are they, they top? About? They are, all right. Alex English, Kelly, listen, uh, Kiki, Vandy, with Kelly, Chippewa. Listen, they people. all could play. <laughs> 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 they all could play. But? Come on, man. Come all right, big boy. Who was that saying that? Did he watch basketball? This is, uh. I'm not taking anything away from them. They all could play. They were very good players, but when you come down to it, man, you know you gotta, you know, say what's real. I mean, come on, come on. When it come down to the playoffs, hey, you talking about the old school guy, right? No, here. but when it come down to taking it on your shoulder and getting them where they want to go in the playoffs, tell me which one of them ever did it. I know Kelly Chapuka. I ain't betting on Kelly Chapuka, but well, Kelly Alex Chipuka was good and, Ke and Kiki, uh, Kiki was good. Was but, good. They, but what I'm saying is that can you take your team and say, listen? Come ride with me. Neither one of them could do that. So uh, they're great players, but neither one of them could do that. They they could score, they could do those things, but which one could say, "Come ride with me"? Like you say, the Houston team, Elijah wants to say, "Come ride with me." Man, Mark, uh, he Larry had more Bird say, than... "Come ride with me." How tall was the king for real? Though, I don't man? know. He was. He king. didn't look that tall though, right? Elijah wants. It don't matter how tall you are, <laughs> or you, are, you know. I don't care how tall he was. Uh, you know, at this time we got, like I say, intellectualradio.com. Here I am. Total life changes. Uh, please come, your boy, and inbox me so I can get any information to you. Or you know what, you guys are so savvy. I can't get away from you. No way. Yeah. It, it, somehow you know how to get to me. So get to me, and I will introduce you to the product. Like I say, I, I lost like oh shoot, I guess close to. 70, 80 pounds Mark, you look great, yeah. man. And but, I tell you what, man, but, seeing Mark uh, around town doing your thing with the people, man, yeah, we man. need this right here. Man, this is a look, breath of fresh air, though, big dog. Look, For real, man. I know you don't ain't like nobody, all that. Ain't, ain't nobody going to touch the people like I touch the people. That's I'm what I'm saying, man. Touch, we huh? need this, man. Listen, listen. Like, Chicago needs this, man. Listen, right, man. So, let me tell you. I just want you to know that, man. But I want you guys to help me. Uh, I will be in all those things. Last thing I'm going to touch on is this, is that. I keep getting this thing about trash talking. It's just going to be real simple. And I'm going to leave the show with this real simple. Is that trash talking is done by the inferior player. Let me say it again. Trash talking is done by the inferior player. And I'm going to back it up with this. I play Larry head on head a hundred times. We talk about you holding me, you know, quit doing that. But when you can ball, two ballers, they don't have time to trash talk. I got, look, I'm worried about the next play, how I can get off this screen, what I can do, how I can get away from you. I'm worried about that. I might say as much, quit holding me. But Jordan, when you catch my teammate, Joe Dumars, battle. You had never heard about them trash talking because there was too much respect for top line ball players. When you talk about uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Moses Malone playing against somebody, when you talk about the... Moses Malone. Well, he wasn't talking trash. Classic. You ain't talking no trash. I'm so glad know? when he went to Philly and helped Doc win it, man. You know, when you talk about Kobe, when Kobe played the top player, he focused. It's, he it, locked he in, time man. time for no trash talk. And we talk about Reggie Miller, who supposed to be trash talk. When Reggie matched up against Jordan, they might have gotten to tussles, but that's a different thing. But you didn't see 
no back and forth. Right. They battled. So what I'm telling you is that that player that's inferior usually starts to trash talking and try to throw you off your game. But when that inferior player runs into the real deal, his mouth stops. <laughs> he don't want that. He don't want to piss that guy off. Uh-huh. You don't want to yeah, piss him off. Lying. You don't want to piss him off. Do not wake up a sleeping don't giant. Don't wake the giant. You know, don't think about waking the giant. Hey, guys, listen. Um, I'm going to drop it from there, but all I really want to say is, is that I'm on your stuff all week, you know, and uh, I am really Andrew Tony. trying to make a difference uh, in everything you're saying. We communicate a lot. Uh, I'm going to be... Uh, dropping my shows off uh, a little early to everybody. And also, I got a fan page now. Uh, all of my Facebook was built up a long time ago. So, you know, you got to look for my fan page and friend me there, and I can continue to roll with you that way. And uh, please join us next Sunday. Your cousin said something right here before I we get off. Radio. D- 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 Derek Strickland, real quick. He said, Derek Strickland said, when Kobe hit 80, Against Jalen Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose said that he didn't trash talk none that game. How are you gonna trash talk? And you got eighty one. Yeah, eighty. <laughs> eighty. <laughs> what are you gonna say? <laughs> you, you can't get eighty two. <laughs> what are you gonna say? You man, know what you gonna say? Nasty. But respect is respect, man. And yeah. uh, you know, um, I'm bringing it to you real. Intellectualradio.com. Remember my sponsor. I'm your boy, Bobby, Robert Bobby Reed. My Chicago boy, my millionaire. boy, my boy. Listen, we're going to bring it to you. Miss, all right? I and think, I think Bobby Robert Robert let me ride with him. The blessed one. I'm blessed, man. No, I'm man, here with listen, the big dog, man. Man, listen, I am just a down there, brother. And y'all know because I'm on there with you. I'm not just posting videos. I'm listening to what you see. I'm answering back. I'm doing this. and um, Yeah, sir. And it means a lot to me. You know, it really means a lot to me. I don't want you to think it doesn't because I think a lot of people forget the fact that you have to be personal with people. And there's a lot of you, but I am doing the best I can, and I don't have nobody in the back answering my questions. That's right. Nobody's answering my questions. Big Mog, Big Mog, Big Mog. Intellectual Radio, baby. All right, Big Dog. Good show, Big Baby. Man, I enjoyed that show, Big Mog. Love fun to me, man. Man, I'm talking about I learn something new every time I sit down with you, man. I'm telling you, man. I learn something new, man. I mean, I ain't go to the league. I was a street league. I was in the streets.